I think boas are an amazing species to own. Just looking at the pattern that they come in and some of the morphs and colorations that you can get, they just are incredible. This with their demeanor and the fact that they get to a pretty substantial size, I think they just make a great pet for anyone looking for a big snake. The question is, does the red tail boa make the perfect snake? Well, today I'm going to give my three main reasons why I think that is true. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the red tail boa being the perfect large snake. Now before we get that started, of course you guys probably noticed some snake shed right here. Yes, this is my female Mexican black king snakes pre-lay shed. So I mean, we are getting really close to uh, king snake eggs right now. Probably within the next two weeks, I would imagine. I would assume the end of the month you guys can expect Mexican black, Mex <laughs> Mexican black king snake baby eggs. Well, eggs, and then the babies come after us. The babies aren't making the eggs. You, you, you know what I mean now. <laughs> the top of hand, that is boas being the perfect large snake. Now, I'll be going over the three main reasons, of course, and I'm going to be start with number one, the personality slash demeanor. As far as all of my snakes go, I gotta say the boa has to be the most personal and the best demeanor out of all of them. I think they make just such a perfect combination of, you know, fun, exploring, kind of like the colubrids, but without, you know, the bitey and strikiness of them. They kind of just chill out and just roam around, really. And what better way to show that? Uh, taking my boa out, which is right underneath me. <laughs> I'll just give you a quick example of how easy it is to get her out. Um, if you guys want to know some more in depth on how I do it, you know, using snake hooks and things like that, I did make a video that I'll post probably right into my face area right here. But other than that, we're just going to go right on in. So you can see right now she's pretty fresh. She's looking like she wants a meal. So I'm just going to use the snake hook to let her know that, you know, we're not food. She shouldn't eat us. Just get her know that, you know, this isn't feed time. So pretty much I just keep doing this until she goes into a retreat position and then at that point I'll be taking her out. There you go, sweetie. So what you're looking for is her to get out of that S shape. So we'll just speed this up. We'll just hook her in. And that's what we're looking for. So just getting her into the retreat position. Now don't be fooled, she may look a little small, but this is a, <laughs> this is a hefty animal. <laughs> All right. And really, there you have it. Um, that was pretty straightforward, um, pretty easy. You see, there really wasn't any difficulty in getting her out. She wasn't up, you know, just trying to strike me, trying to strike the glass. You saw she looked like she was a little bit in a feeding mode. And then, oh my god, this fucking tegu. <laughs> Oh yeah, Dakota, just make a video before you feed the Teku, it'll be fine. Literally watch him just do asinine things for the next five minutes, running up, trying to knock over lights, trying to break out of the tent. I'm Jesus. Let's talk a little bit about the red tail boa's personality and demeanor, and this is pretty much it. You can see now, I think the snake is kind of the best of both worlds, if I describe it, into talking about more like colubrid personality and ball python personality. Well, this snake is a little bit more exploratory as, say, a ball python that kind of just sits there, you know? This snake's moving around, she's exploring, she's trying to figure stuff out, and she's going right to try to uh, tangle herself into the right light ring again. This is a snake that's just up and around and moving. It's a little energetic, and it kind of is a little more of a better experience I feel than just kind of like the standard ball python that for the most part kind of just lays there you just wrap her around your neck and just kind of lays there and does nothing almost like jewelry I don't know <laughs> Whereas, although she does have kind of that colubrid you know exploring around she doesn't have the I like to call it the colubrid attitude sometimes you know with like the king snake especially the California king snakes they can sometimes get a little nippy a little uh, more cantankerous to work with than say again a ball python where this girl kind of as I'm saying lives in kind of the best of both worlds You have an animal that likes exploring uh, Likes moving around is definitely gonna give you a workout when she gets this size But not something that I need to fear that I'm gonna be bit at any point of time as I've seen in my past videos Oh geez, she got stuck <laughs> As you can see in my past videos this snake is just amazing not head shy whatsoever You can just move around in her face just pet her head, pet her chin, and just moves around, you know, no issue whatsoever. This is a snake where I feel completely safe with, and I'm not in any fear that I'm gonna be bitten or you know, you're hurt really in any way, shape, or form during my time handling her. So yeah, to wrap that first part up, um, just a great personality snake, fun snake to have, and just exciting. All right, but moving on, let's get... <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, she got a funny face. But moving on, let's get into the second reason why I think they make the perfect large snake, and that's going to be care requirements. As far as large snakes go, I think the boa requirements are very fairly easy. It's pretty standard, just a... Where are you going? I'm like trying not to trip and now she... <laughs> <laughs> Reason number one, people, just a fun snake to own. All in all, I think they just have a very basic care requirement set up. You know, this isn't gonna be something like the Brazilian rainbow boars where you need absolute high humidity or else your animal's gonna suffer to that. This animal just is a relatively human species with just the basic standard, you know, heat mat for heat and that's really pretty much. <laughs> really getting at is that the care isn't complicated for this snake. It is a snake that is a snake that's going to get big, but it's still going to be relatively easy to care for as far as its husbandry goes. Go for it, Noodle. Get to the light. No? Alright. <laughs> I see what she's trying to do. She's trying to just tie me straight up, and it's not going to work. I don't fall for these snake shenanigans. Snakes, man. I don't know. See, I mean, I'm literally, I'm tied up right now. She's got her tail on this end. She's trying to restrain my arms, people. The snake knows what she's doing. <sighs> All right, now that I got my uh, nice little shoulder, shoulder jewelry here, let's talk about the final reason, and it's gonna be the pretty obvious, um, the size. Now, when we're talking about the perfect large snake, I kind of do it as a universe, I think about it, as really a universal meaning, you know, is this the best snake for everyone? Well, we can talk about some of the giants, like the Burmese python, the reticulated python, you know, these are species that are going to get quite large, into the around 15 feet area. And as far as that going for everyone, I don't think it makes the perfect snake. Now, while, of course, I would prefer to own a retic or Burmese versus a red tail, it's not the case for everyone. And really, when you're going to with a snake that kind of needs when it gets to its adult size, at least two handlers to make sure you're having a safe experience, it can get a little, you know, people can kind of turn or turn back and be like, mm, I don't know if that's the animal for me. When we're talking about the cases such as boas, they get a pretty manageable length. Viv is around, uh, I want to say four, maybe five years old, and she is, well, this large. Um, I wouldn't say around seven feet. I haven't measured her. I've never really measured her. I just take, uh, you know, educated guesses. She keeps going inside my dreads and then falls out. That's literally what's happening this entire video. Or seven to eight feet, which is going to go your average, uh, just the uh, BCI, the common boa, not those true red tails. The true red tails do get a little larger, but pretty much if you're thinking about just the, uh, like I said, the common boa, they'll get roughly this size. She may get a little larger as she ages, but this is relatively, you know, what you're going to be working with. Personally, I think this is a very manageable size. Now, it's not too hectic, like I mentioned, with the retics or berms where you're going to be needing like a, the buddy system to make sure that nothing bad's going to happen. This is a snake where, at this size, she's going through the light ring. This is a snake where, at this size, although I have some trouble, I don't really have anything to fear as far as I feel like this is a manageable size where I can personally take care of it without any issues. And, man, you are just taking some deep breaths, girl. Before anyone says anything, it's not a respiratory infection. Large snakes do tend to breathe sometimes, so just have an RI, because I know someone's gonna hear and think, that animal has an RI, you need to take it to the vet. It's not a respiratory infection, it's just they breathe loud now. I <laughs> Yeah, while Viv does give me quite a workout, you know, my my arms are getting a little tired making this video, um, I think she's just a manageable snake, and just an impressive one at that. This is something where, when people, when you're thinking, you know, oh man, I want a large snake, but I want something that I can generally feel confident in handling, I think a red tail boa just does make a perfect example of that. Fun, personable, easy to care for, and still get a relatively large size are going to be the main reasons why I believe that the boa constrictor makes the perfect large snake. You may be asking yourselves, Dakota, why do you keep calling it a boa constrictor where you've called it a red tail this entire time? Well, that's because people are party poopers and keep telling me I'm not using the proper terminology, which you know, I'll give them that. It is, uh, it is true, but I mean, I just use a red tail boa as more of a marketing term because, you know, not many people, there are different kind of boa constrictors where many people are just familiar with what a red tail is, even though that it's not the uh, common locality to be a true red tail. So, yeah, so that's, and that's pretty much gonna wrap up the video for today. Red tail boas, amazing, fun to look at, fun to hold, and get a big size. What could be better? I mean, this is, when you say puppy dog tame, look, it gets little chin scratches, and there's no issues.
All right, well, as you can hear, I think someone's hungry, so we're gonna wrap it up. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you think the boa makes the perfect large snake, or is there another one out there that you feel is a better candidate? Let me know in the comment section, and I'd really love to hear about it. Other than that, if you liked the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you wanna see some more of my animals or breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at DBCB Exotics. Other than that, of course, we have the Herp Hour. The Herp Hour is a podcast that I do with myself and Professor Herp. We stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. We also did just release an Instagram and YouTube account, so definitely check those out. I will have them in the uh, description for the links for them in the description below. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.